All right, hello everyone. My name is Corey Dowds of Eye of the Veda. I'm here to talk a little bit about the coronavirus and uh, talk about that in the context of the eclipses. So, <clears throat> you know, I've of course had some people ask me about my thoughts on the coronavirus. And, uh, you know, I have quite a lot of thoughts about it, so I am not going to be able to get all get to all of them in this one video, but I wanted to first talk about what I already had predicted for this eclipse period. So in December 28th, 2019 at 10.06 a.m. I wrote on my Eye of the Veda Facebook page, which, you know, go and like that and make sure to click the default see first in newsfeed option or else, you know, Facebook will never show it to you even if you click like on it. But um, yeah, so I wrote here one more eclipse forecast prediction. There will likely be some extreme cases of flooding in Asia or other parts of the world. There may be extreme thunderstorms and lots of damage due to water. Capricorn rules watery ground. Cancer rules floodable tidal areas as well. The eclipses here will bring water and flooding issues. Also, in a medical sense, more people may have water retention issues, swelling, constipation, or issues with the blood flow and the water in the body. The moon rules the circulatory, urinary, and respiratory system. Issues could occur around that system. Saturn rules the muscular and lymphatic system, which swells up if it is not used enough. So if you feel cooped up this winter, just do some stretches, take a walk, keep the muscles and the lymph moving in the body, and that should help. So, of course, a lot of that is not re relevant to the COVID-19 coronavirus, but, um, and I'm not saying that I directly predicted that, but let's give some credit where credit is due. I literally said that this eclipse is going to be impacting Asia the most, and that there is going to be issues around the moon ruled respiratory system for people in Asia. That's pretty impressive, right? I mean, come on. I'm not even getting paid to do mundane astrology or anything. Nations and politicians don't come to me. You know, th this doesn't pay the bills. Imagine if I was actually given a grant or something by an institute to actually study and make real mundane predictions with taking my time and everything, casting the actual ingress charts for each nation and everything like that. We don't have time for that in this modern day. Um, so I only get to study mundane astrology on my own in my free time, just reading Brihat Samhita in my backyard, having, you know, just hanging out or something like that. So, uh, um, you know, I'm not trying to say that this prediction is just like perfectly directly predicting the coronavirus, but, you know, I did, I did say that there's going to be respiratory health issues, you know, I went out of my way to kind of like, you know, ramble about the health issues going on. I intuitively just felt like I needed to do that when I was making this post. I said how there would be major, how the eclipse would cause flooding in Asia and other parts of the world. Um, so the corona is not related to flooding, but you see that this is um, the lung issues had to do with swelling and that, you know, when you cough, you have this fluid in your lung. So you can see how there was a lot of these kappa or fluid and lung related issues that I was seeing. And really having a virus makes perfect sense because Rahu represents viruses and Rahu is the planet that is in cancer now and why I was making all these predictions. Um, and so making it a lung virus, a respiratory virus, is just perfect for the astrology. Although I didn't, you know, take the chance and write virus. I even thought about it, but I didn't, so that's my fault. So, um, <clears throat> and you notice how I, I wrote that in a medical sense, more people are going to have swelling and constipation issues with the blood flow. Well, the thing is, that's the moon. The moon rules the blood flow, the circulatory, and the respiratory in the urinary system. These are all interconnected. And so, you know, if you've studied medical astrology, particularly if you study the uh, medical course that Ernst Wilhelm taught, um, he explains how the moon rules those three systems and goes into great detail about it. And so for me to say that, you know, more people would have water retention issues, more people would have swelling and constipation. It's kind of implied that that would happen in the area of the breast ruled by cancer and the moon. And that basically implies lung issues, you know? So I know I didn't exactly nail that, but 
I think that would have been pretty good advice if you're a person in Asia and you had read this post. You know what I mean? You could have started taking more, you know, lung supplements and things like that early on. Um, you know, trying to stay away from smoke or things like that early on, maybe. So I just felt like I needed to bring that to the attention of everyone. Not trying to, you know, aggrandize myself again, but this is for the sake of understanding astrology. Um, now, one more really cool thing to consider is. So yeah, I said that there would be flooding in Asia. That was the main purpose of the post, saying that uh, there's going to be weird, irregular rains, irregular thunderstorms, uh, flooding. There's going to be things that just mess up all the agricultural processes for a lot of Asian parts of the world. And therefore for us, and this will make an economic impact to the whole world as well. But the other thing is that, yeah, on the 28th of December, I wrote that this eclipse period, which was happening, um, the eclipse happened, we were already in that phase, basically December and then um, January and February and even March is still part of the eclipse phase. And then, I mean, the thing is, is really eclipses are kind of always impacting because you're, you're basically dealing with them happening every six months and then by the time they're about to wane, the next eclipse's energy is about to increase. So it's, you know, there's always sort of some, some energy impacting the world and that most intense energy that's always impacting the world is always the eclipse energy going on. So um, <clears throat> I wrote how, yeah, there will be the flooding in Asia and when, and then, you know, I just like, week I don't even read the news but just like a you know a week or two after that I thought I bet that's happened and I just googled and I just looked I just typed in flooding in Asia and this is what came up and there was 66 people have now been killed by flooding in Jakarta and more rain appears to be on the way this is an article from January 6th 2020 so this was like right in the middle of the eclipse phase because we had one on December 26th and then we would have one two weeks after that so this was right in between that most intense eclipse window and sure enough we had flooding in Asia as predicted so um, I'm hopefully you can see the screens of the news articles that I'm sharing while I'm talking about this and um, yeah that's just it that's all I want to do is, is bring that to your attention and there is a very likely going to be a lot more storms and flooding and destructive natural disasters going on over the course of this spring and summer. Um, Rahu and the eclipse is in Ardra right now, which is the most destructive, is a very, very destructive nakshatra, and Ketu is in Mula, the other most destructive nakshatra. In fact, when you find people who have Rahu and Ketu on this axis, <clears throat> there can be a major emphasis on they can be like a lot of like whistleblowers or people who are activists who are always fighting to dissolve and dismantle these corrupt structures and to rebuild new ones. And we see that happening in the mundane world right now. It's unbelievable um, how much of that is going on. Now, before I go, just in case I don't get time to, you know, officially make these predictions in a more formal sense. If you guys haven't watched the previous videos, go watch my video on all about the Capricorn Rashi where I explain how also earlier this year I predicted the major UFO disclosure that happened in September. I predicted that from a video back in April of 2018. Um, and I'm also predicting that there will be much more talk of UFOs, much more talk of deep space discoveries, much more talk of the space programs talk of secret space programs, talk of the Space Force, all this stuff. There's going to be just so much more UFO uh, disclosure and um, advancements in aviation and spacecraft, just like I was saying earlier for the rest of the year, because Capricorn rules all of that stuff. And we have so much activity going on in Capricorn. And we're hanging out in a world where our phones have advanced so dramatically but yet we're still flying in a thing that was built in the 70s we're still flying in airplanes that were designed in the 70s you know so it's also just logical that we need to make a lot of changes to aviation to air travel and i've already talked about that it's going to keep happening where there's going to be more free energy kind of stuff moving forward because um you know saturn has to do with being the most sustainable 
And so all these things helping out Saturn and Jupiter, representing energy and fuel, delighting Saturn right now with K2, which has to do with restructuring things in the sign of the world, Capricorn. That basically means that we're going to have a lot of huge restructuring from the top down, which uh, means changing of fuel. Ch basically, fossil fuels are on the way out. They already were the past, but they're really going to be the past this year. And new things are going to be unveiled and released that were already there, but they're going to be made more public. Um, the other crazy thing about all this stuff in Capricorn is that basically what we're experiencing is a changing of the guard right now is how I would put it. So if I don't get time to make a whole video about that, we are in the changing of the guard right now. Saturn is the old guard. Saturn is with K2 and K2 is, like I said, deals with restructuring and reorganizing and dissolving, letting go of things from the past that don't serve us. Capricorn is a sign of royalty, of kings, of the elite, of the movers and shakers of the world. And so this is why I keep saying that this is why all these high level uh, elite figures who are corrupt are being busted right now. And we don't even know it yet, but they are, I'm sure, of, of it from the astrology. So. All, and this started back in the summer on the last eclipse and then Epstein got busted within a couple of days of that. So there's going to be a, there's already been a lot more of that we just don't know about in my opinion and there will continue to be a lot more of that. Another thing that you can look into to kind of help confirm this that I want to talk about is that there's going to be, there was a, there's a bunch of different articles, it's hard to say, but there's been like thousands of CEOs that have resigned since Trump came into office. There's been like 3,000 or more. Um, Bill Gates just stepped down from a certain Microsoft position, the CEO of like Uber, of Hulu, of like just all these random things they've been uh, stepping down or changing or, or whatever. I think that's because there are a lot of people in this world that are very corrupt that have dirt on them and that deals are being given to them so that they or they are wanting to step out of their position of power before things hit the fan. or. You know, maybe it's just something less intense than that. But either way, it's just a very, it's a corporate restructuring, a changing of the guard. Saturn is basically saying all the stuff that happened in my last cycle is not going to be able to happen again in this next cycle. Um, he's making sure of that. Now, again, I said back in April of 2018 that we we're going to find aquatic life in outer space. I'm just continuing to double down on that. I think that we may be in the next year are going to find aquatic life in outer space or we are going to find some form of life in outer space because the reason I say that is because Jupiter is the the planet of life the Jiva planet and he is in Capricorn the sign of things flying in the air and connected to all this UFO outer space stuff so maybe not <clears throat> but um, but that's also a big possibility um, we could find it on one of the moons of, of Jupiter or Saturn or something like that Now, at the time that I said that in April 2018, there has been one really cool thing is that a massive frozen under a frozen lake of water has been found on Mars. And this is not just a small amount of water. This is a lake the size of Lake Michigan. So there probably is remnants of life there if they don't find real life. <clears throat> I would even speculate that when we do find life if in this cycle, it will be this like worm-like little microscopic gator-like life because that would perfectly symbolize Capricorn, which is the water goer or the, the, the Capricorn, the gator, the, the crocodile. Um, so I, so to emphasize, the like if, if I don't get time to make another video, I see a lot more CEOs stepping down. I see a lot more changing of the corporate structure, entire restructuring um, going on. I also see flooding, more flooding, more storms in Asia, like the locusts that happened, more things like that. It's it's biblical, you know what I mean, right now? Um, and that's what that Ardra, those, that Ardra and, and Mula, Nakshatra energy are going to do. Um, new breakthroughs in all kinds of science and health fields. Like Ernst said back in 2017, there's going to be major economic issues because of this eclipse phase, and we've already faced that. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And then um, for the coronavirus, I think that's quite fitting because literally corona means a crown, head, royalty. 
And this virus, is, and Rahu is a virus. Rahu represents detoxing. So literally calling this the coronavirus is literally saying the detoxification of the, of the leaders, of the royalty. And it's really weird how high level people are being hit with this and a lot of normal people are not. And it doesn't make any sense. And so there's something like, I feel like there's some divine thing like God, Saturn, however you want to put it. The universe is detoxifying all these corrupt crowns, heads, corrupt heads of state, corrupt corona, you see? So um, those people are getting this virus or are basically this coronavirus is an omen, is a nimita, is a is a way to understand what's really going on behind the scenes is that um, a lot of the old ways of the elite of the ruling class are not working anymore and they're crumbling and they're falling apart um, and that's what this virus is you know what I mean this virus is a isn't is a representation of that so literally think about it corona crown it's like a it's like a synonym for Sun virus is a synonym for Rahu Sun plus Rahu is what is happening corona plus virus I hope you're getting this what is Sun Rahu Sun Rahu is an eclipse when the Sun hits Rahu it gets eclipsed so this is the eclipse the coronavirus isn't that so perfect okay peace you guys take care